Once we have outlets, computer outlets in every home, each of them hooked up to enormous libraries where anyone can ask any question and be given answers, be given reference material, be something you're interested in knowing. From an early age, however silly it might seem to someone else, that's what you're interested in. And you ask, and you can find out, and you can follow it up. And you can do it in your own home, in your, at your own speed, in your own direction, in your own time. Then everyone will enjoy learning. Nowadays, what people call learning is forced on you. And everyone is forced to learn the same thing on the same day at the same speed in class. And everyone is different. For some it goes too fast, for some too slow, for some in the wrong direction. But give them a chance, in addition to school, I don't say we abolish school, but in addition to school, to follow up their own bent from the start. Well, I love the, I love the vision, but what about, uh, what about the argument that machines, computers, dehumanize learning? Well, as a matter of fact, it's just the reverse. Uh, it seems to me that it's through this machine that for the first time we'll be able to have a one-to-one -one relationship between information source and information consumer, what so to mean? speak. Well, in the old days, in the old days, you used to have tutors for children. A person who could afford it would hire a pedagogue, a tutor, and he would teach the children, and if he knew his job, he could adapt his teaching to the tastes and abilities of the students, you see. But how many people could afford to hire a pedagogue? Most children went uneducated. Then we reached the point where it's absolutely necessary to educate everybody. But the only way we could do it is to have one teacher for a great many of students, and in order to organize the situation properly, we gave them a curriculum to teach from. So how many teachers are good at this, too? Like in everything else, the number of teachers is far greater than the number of good teachers. So we, we either have a one-to-one -one relationship for the very few or a one-to-many relationship for the many. Now there's a possibility of a one-to-one -one relationship for the many. Everyone can have a teacher in the form of access to the gathered knowledge of the human species. Through the libraries that are connected to the computer That's right. in my, on my desk in my home. Right. I can sit there and call up, uh, well, what if I want to learn only about baseball? Well, that's all right. You learn all you want about baseball because the more you learn about baseball, the more you might grow interested in mathematics and try to figure out what they mean by those earned run averages and the batting averages and so on. You might, in the end, become more interested in math than baseball if you follow your own bent and you're not told. On the other hand, someone who is interested in mathematics may suddenly find himself very enticed by the problem of how you throw a curved ball. And he may find himself engaged in sports physics, so to speak. Well, why not? Why not?